thing is to own up. Not only you got fed up, but you need to own up. You need to own not just that you made a mistake, not just that you took a wrong path. You're owning up to the fact that you sinned. That what you do, that's what you've done, you being the center of the universe, you focused on yourself, that that is actually idolatry and that you've sinned against God. That's exactly what this young boy does. You notice in the text, you might circle it or underline it. It says that he came to himself or he came to his senses. Basically, the light bulb came on. You notice the speech that he tells his dad, uh, Father, I've sinned. Notice that word. I've sinned against God and I've sinned against you. I've hurt you. I've done wrong. And he owns it. He doesn't just say it was a mistake. He, He notices the seriousness of the situation. He says, I've done a crummy job of being the CEO of the universe. The universe isn't cooperating with me. I've made it about me. I'm a sinner and I'm owning up to it. And the reason that you own up to your sin is because it's your sin that separates you from God. Now, if you're a Christian, if you're a believing person, then you are, you are covered. You are forgiven of sin because of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Your sins no longer separate you from God, but your sins will and can and do grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And if you sometimes find yourself praying and it feels like nobody's listening, or you feel like you and God aren't on speaking terms, it may be because you have habitual sin in your life that you're refusing to repent of, and until you get fed up with that life and own up to the fact that you've sinned, you'll never get close to God. You'll never feel the nearness. You always feel like he's distant. And so you own it. You own up. I've, I've made an idol. This younger brother, he made an idol out of sex, money, power, prestige. He made an idol out of himself. But the older brother was also worshiping an idol. And the older brother is worshiping the idol of self-righteousness. He got security in life by being better than other people. He got his sweetness in life by being better than other people. He used his morality and his religion to look down on other people. And instead of celebrating the grace of God, instead of being near to the heart of the Father, he was on the outside. Why? because he was sinning. Sin is not just doing bad things. Sin is when we love anything else more than we love the Lord. And you can do that as a younger brother. You can do that as the older brother. It's idolatry. Money can be an idol. Your spouse can be an idol. Your kids can be an idol. Working out can be an idol. What people think of you can be an idol. Your physical appearance can be an idol. Anything can be an idol. And when you're worshiping idols, you can't get near the heart of God. And most of the time when God is removing things from your life, whether that's a relationship or a car or a house or a job, many times the reason that he removes that is because you were worshiping that created thing instead of worshiping your creator. And your heavenly father knows that the most important thing about you is that you draw near. Your heavenly father knows that that stuff you're worshiping is just stuff, it's temporary, it's not eternal. You know it's eternal? You're eternal. You're gonna live forever. And you'll either live forever with God or you'll live forever without God. And the determining factor is whether or not while you're on this earth, you choose to draw near, to get close. Your heavenly Father loves you. He does everything that he does in your life out of love. And so this accusation, God's not fair, why would God do this? So that attitude that Bruce says misses out on this vision of God as a loving heavenly father who's trying to draw you near, he's trying to make you discontent, he's trying to get you fed up so that you'll own up and draw near. What about you this morning? Where are you at? Are you close? 